Hello and welcome to another episode of Double J's List. Uh, I'm here to talk about electric cars. Uh, I've always liked the idea of electric cars. Uh, I always liked the idea of uh, not having to go to the gas station anymore. I've always liked the idea of not having to do oil changes uh, and other maintenance that are uh, associated with gasoline engines. Uh, I like the idea of not having a transmission because uh, the one benefit of Electric cars is that they have the same amount of torque at zero all the way up to whatever the red line might be of the electric motor. It can be very high. Uh, so you, there's no need for gears. Uh, and then when you need to go backwards, it just uh, reverses polarity and backwards you go. Uh, simplifies things a lot. Um, I also like regenerative braking because it saves on your brake pads. Uh, I've owned two hybrids. Uh, we had a 2010... Toyota Prius and a 2006 Ford Escape hybrid and uh, brake life is amazing because a lot of when you hit the brake pedal most of the slowing down is done uh, to regenerate power for the battery and they actually doesn't even engage the brakes until you absolutely need them uh, so I, I got over a hundred thousand miles out of my my front brake pads on my Prius and they 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 wore unevenly because they got rusty from non-use so that, that says a lot about uh, uh, about how that works. Uh, it's great. So um, I'm really intrigued at the idea of a complete electric car uh, and eliminating the uh, gasoline engine. And I know that there are advantages and disadvantages of that, but I think we're now at a point in technology where it's becoming really, really feasible. Uh, the two cars I'm going to talk about that are somewhat affordable for most people are... Uh, one that everyone covets is the Tesla Model 3. Um, and then uh, the Chevy Bolt. B with a, or Bolt with a B, uh, not the Volt that they make, uh, which is essentially a, they call it a, a, a gas-assisted electric. Uh, it really is just a hybrid, uh, so to speak. But anyway, I don't want to get into the, the, the nuts and bolts of that. And it's kind of funny. I don't know why they chose the, the name their cars Bolt and Volt because they sound so similar, the B and the V sound. I think it was like a marketing idea that just kind of went wrong. The Tesla Model 3 came out uh, as something that people could afford. Uh, the standard range one does 220 miles on a charge. In the used market, they seem to hold their value really, really well. So uh, this one that I found comparable to the one that's local to me, to, comparable to a Chevy Bolt that's local to me, I, I'm going to start with this, is that uh, it uh, is over $40,000. In fact, it's uh, $42,000, almost $43,000 for a used one with around 18,000 miles on it. Now, we're going to move on to the Chevy Bolt, which is at the dealership that's in the same town that I live in. It's certified used with additional warranty, and it's only $21,918. And that's asking price, I'm sure you could work them down from there. Um, pretty remarkable because the, uh, the Bolt actually has more range, although it's 238 miles. They're so close that I would just consider it the same because there's so many variables that, that go with driving style and, and weather and temperature and so much. So let's just, let's just call it the same driving range. Uh, but my point here is that uh, both cars are extremely comparable uh, as far as electric cars go, and you get a whole lot more for your money with the Chevy Bolt. Uh, it's, it's a $20,000 plus difference in the used car market. So um, first I want to talk about how uh, the Chevy Bolt uh, is, has liquid cooling for the batteries. Uh, from everything that I have read, you're much better off to have liquid cooling for your batteries, and that seems to increase battery life immensely. Uh, the, the other cars that don't have it, such as the, uh, the Volkswagen e-Golf, have had more battery failures because they use uh, air cooling, uh, which I find ironic that Volkswagen's using air cooling again. Anyway, um, some of the other advantages, I think, of, of the Bolt over the Model 3, uh, it's, it's, it's a hatchback body style, so it's more versatile. It has a good size back seat. Um, it's a physically smaller car and, and probably easier to park, uh, easier to, man to maneuver. Uh, and uh, say what you want about General Motors and Chevrolet, uh, they're a more established company than Tesla. 
Uh, they've been around for a really long time. They have huge research and development departments, uh, some of the best engineers in the world. Uh, if they want to make a really good car, they can. Um, they also have a better dealership network. Uh, like I said, there's a, there's, a, there's a Chevy dealer right around the corner from me. Uh, and then another one, you know, five minutes down the road. Uh, where do you get your Tesla serviced around here? I couldn't tell you. Uh, so that's something to think about and consider why, why, why the Bolt might be actually be a little bit better. Some of the disadvantage or some of the advantages of the Model 3, um, quite frankly, it's a Tesla and it's really cool. Um, what that company has, able, has been able to do is really remarkable because uh, a lot of naysayers said that they weren't going to be able to pull off what they've pulled off. Uh, making a car is extremely hard uh, in the modern age. Uh, it's not like 100 years ago when someone could start a car company out of their garage. Uh, and they've accomplished it. They've made a lot of cars now, and there's a lot of them. I, I've seen two today just drive by my house. I don't even live on a very busy road. So uh, they, they, they've, done, they've done a really good job. Um, and it's, it's a cool car, and that, that's and it's pretty good looking. I, I guess one, one thing you can say about the Bolt is kind of ugly, even though it's, it's a more versatile car. Uh, small hatchbacks usually aren't super attractive. Uh, the Model 3 is a little bit faster. Um, I don't have the specs in front of me right now, but it, it, that's, that's one of the, uh, the cool things about Teslas is they, they tend to be pretty quick. Um, but the Bolt isn't slow. It's still 0 to 60 in the 6s. So uh, in every review I've seen or read, Claim with the the way that the torque is with a an electric motor with it on at any RPM, it just snaps you back in your seat. So that's pretty cool. Um, I, I don't even think it's that much of a detriment. Um, the technology of the Tesla, as far as the interior and the infotainment, is really intriguing. Um, it's neat how the car connects to your your internet in your house wirelessly and does updates, and you get in your car and things have changed. Uh, they've added features that that's really really cool, but again the 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 Chevy Bolt uh, it doesn't do that, but it just uh, it, it has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and all the stuff that you'd expect in a in a, a nicely optioned modern car. Um, and then one more advantage of the Model Three, even though it's not a hatchback and not as versatile as the Bolt, it has a rear trunk and it has a front trunk, or as they like to call it, a frunk. It's pretty cool. Uh, if you, you run a storage in the back, you get another place to stick stuff in the front. There are a few other electric cars on the market. See, the, the, in my opinion, those two cars are the most feasible for the money. Um, you, I mean, you can get into Model S's and Model X's. They start getting really expensive. Uh, and then some of the luxury brands are starting to offer some really, really cool electric cars. Um, but again, the cost is really prohibitive. Um, some of the more affordable ones that are around right now, uh, the Fiat 500e. Uh, they're pretty affordable in the used car market, but they have a very small range. Uh, same goes for the BMW i3. Tremendously expensive new, lose a ton of value when they're used, and they're really cool. They're very unique looking. Uh, the, the whole car is made of carbon fiber, which is unheard of uh, in, a, in, a, in a car that, for the masses, it's like race car and exotic car stuff. Uh, the Mini Electric also has a really small amount of range. Uh, but uh, I think that if you can get over 200 miles out of a charge, it's really a sweet spot because that covers, I think, 90 to 95% of the driving population's driving uh, in a day. I, I don't really know too many people that drive over 200 miles a day. Um, and this water would work really well for me. Living here in, outside of Buffalo and actually south of Buffalo where we get even more snow than, than Buffalo, uh, driving it through the winter is a concern. Uh, but as you've seen from my other videos, I've got the, the Lexus Land Cruiser. Um, that's, that's what I'll probably use on days that I need to uh, trudge through snow. Um, I'm not saying I'm doing this yet. I really, really want to. Um, and then there's some other aspects of it, too, that you have to think about. Uh, I had to have to run a 220-volt uh, line from my fuse box down to my garage uh, to install a charger because I want to use fast charging. Um, because the, the charger comes with the plugs into the wall, uh, I, I want to say it was like 16 hours or something like they get a full charge. It, it, it takes a really long time. Um, I'd like for it to be charged in about eight hours or less. 
other than that, um, I really don't know if I have much more to say on the whole subject other than uh, get on uh, on the car search websites and take a look at uh, how inexpensive these used Chevy Bolts have become. Uh, it's, a, it's really astounding the amount of car that you get for the money and the amount of tech and uh, how much money you would save between maintenance and, and fuel. It's, 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 it's really, really, really hard not to, uh, not to consider. Uh, thank you for watching. Again, like and subscribe. Love to do more videos for you. If, uh, hey, if General Motors or Tesla you're watching and you want to get me a car to drive and talk about, send it on over. Send it to my email, uh, doublejayslist at gmail.com. All right, thank you for watching.